Hello viewers and welcome to a special edition of The Model Guy when I partner with Hobby Nut Models and Mark the owner and put together a build to show you some of the product that he's offering head to his store. Unfortunately for this video, things don't necessarily end the way I intended it to. After reviewing what Mark had in stock on his website, I was very excited to select Edward's MiG-21. It's a kit that I've always been interested in but haven't really been able to find here in Canada. He also threw in some Quintus Studio decals for the cockpit, and he threw in some Ares resins for the wheel bay and for the landing gear itself. If you're not familiar with Quintus Studio's decals, it's a 3D printed decal that works just like any other decal. You put it in warm water and it comes off the backing paper. Now that leaves you with a soft decal that you can put in place. But one thing I found is it was easier to use super glue to really lock these down as they had a tendency to slide a bit under their own weight. The detail in them is very crisp and they also have the glass on the dials as well so these are going to take any model you're building and take it to a whole nother level. If you want to use the super glue method for locking these decals down, simply release it off the backing paper like you normally would, dab it on a cloth, a lint free cloth just to take the moisture off of it and after a few minutes it's dry enough to use super glue to adhere it to its place. One thing that jumps out immediately from Soviet era aircraft is that cockpit blue green they use. I ended up using AK Real Colors Russian turquoise blue, but then I also used Tamiya's clear green just to tint it enough to match the decals. Looking at sources for colors for the wheel bay had everything from aluminum, gray, and green. And I ended up looking at the Polish Air Force aircraft and using Russian Forbio green for the wheel bays. Once all the bodywork was done on the model, it was time to come in with some GX2 Uno Black to set up the base coat for the silvers and the aluminum colors afterwards. I came in with two wet coats of GX2 and coated it with a wet coat of Mr. Leveling Thinner, but I somehow got a little bit of dust in the inner wing area, so I had to polish, polish those out with a really high grit sanding sponge and then repaint it, but all in all it only sent me back a few hours. Once that had dried, I came in with the Mr. Metal Color Aluminum and set the first coat for the metals. Once the Mr. Metal aluminum had dried, I selected a few panels to paint with AK Extreme Metal's polished aluminum and the Dura Aluminum Metal on the leading edges, just to break up that monotony of one color. The way that Edward had engineered this kit, there was very little cleanup because a lot of the parts cover the seams between the fuselage halves, and I ended up using no putty to put this aircraft together. This time around with the AK Extreme Metals, instead of shooting it at 10 to 12 PSI like I had before, which is recommended by them, I ended up shooting it a lot higher, at almost 20 PSI, and that gave it a little more durability, and I found it didn't rub off as easily as it did in the past. Because there's very little for actual color on this aircraft, I decided to weather the green panels to be very beat up as a base. So I used NATO Green as the base, followed by Tamiya Cockpit Green, and then finally brought it over together with Russian Protective Green by AK. Once that was all blended together, I sealed the whole model with two coats of Aqua Gloss, which is an acrylic paint, just so it wouldn't affect the lacquers or enamels underneath. So for the first time with a aluminum metal finish, I hadn't had to do any touching up and everything was going very smoothly and I wasn't seeing any potential problems coming up with the build, except for one thing. When I had left this model on the bench to dry, it was fully intact and sitting on the box it had been painted on. And about an hour later, I had to send my daughter downstairs while she was throwing a tantrum to get her pajamas out of the dryer. And being five years old and throwing a tantrum, she came upstairs and I found this after. I can't exactly prove beyond a reasonable doubt that it was her that did this, but somehow the model fell three feet across the table and hit the ground with what looked to be a torquing motion. I'm no detective, I only do failure analysis on heavy equipment, but you make a decision. I definitely had to take a few deep breaths before contacting Mark and letting him know what had happened, but he actually seemed to take it very well and at this point I owe him a MIG build. Not a big deal, but he's also sent me a P-38 Lightning from Tamiya to build. So the excitement there is, is I get to represent Hobby Nut Models some more with another build. And I'm actually updating the camera that I used for recording. So you're going to see an increase in quality from the footage. So again, Mark, I'm really sorry about with what happened. But 
I know the P38, you're very, you're really going to like it. And the MIG afterwards, you'll really like that as well. So I am the model guy. A big thanks to my patrons as well for joining me on Patreon and seeing what's going on behind the scenes. And I will see you guys next time.